Football Manager 2022 is just around the corner and the FM22 hype train has well and truly left the station with the announcement of a brand new player role, the wide centre-back. The wide centre-back was unveiled by Sports Interactive in their recent teaser trailer and fleshed out in episode one of their in the studio series with the marvellous James Alcott. But what is a wide centre-back and how, if at all, is it going to change the way we play football manager? Hello and welcome back to FM Scout. My name is Reese, and coming up on today's show, I'm going to be talking to you about the history of the centre back position and how it's evolved over the years into what we have now in Football Manager, which is the wide centre back. So do smash a like on the video if you enjoy it at any point. Hit subscribe if you are new, and let me tell you a little story. The centre back position, believe it or not, actually has its origins in midfield, taking the famous 2 3 5 formation as a reference one of the oldest recorded successful tactics in football history. What was then known as the halfback gradually dropped deeper and deeper to eventually become the center half or the center back. This gave the then primarily defensive fullbacks a little bit more support in defensive situations and the team as a whole more coverage against opposing attackers right if you look at the graphic we've got here there's no coverage on the flanks so if you think about a 442 for example the players in a 442 are positioned so that they can cover almost every area of the pitch really you'd want another two players so you could play a 444 four, four, right in the olden days you can see they kind of prioritized the attack right but nowadays you know they're going to prioritize the defense Every manager is just one, two goals away from the sack. So what's happened? They've started putting centre-backs in front of centre-backs in front of centre-backs, right? And that's when we've got the kind of defensive formations that we have today. But if we do fast forward to the 21st century and compare today's formations to the formations of days gone by, you can see that the full-back and the half-back, in some instances, have almost switched position entirely vertically on the pitch. With some modern formations, such as Sheffield United's 3-5-2 from 2019-20, more on that later in the video, employing wing-backs in the midfield and centre-backs, well, centrally and at the back. The overlapping or wide centre-back seems to be a fairly modern construct. It has been used to great effect in Italy with teams like Atalanta, and in England, Chris Wilder took his Sheffield United team to the brink of Champions League qualification, employing attacking wide centre-backs on both flanks. In possession, the wide centre-back would have licence to simply run past or overlap the wing-back, creating overloads on that side of the pitch, while the defensive midfielder in the middle would cover or make himself available for a pass. Sheffield United won huge plaudits in that season from media pundits and ex-footballers and managers alike. It was kind of groundbreaking and no one had ever really seen it before, the overlapping slash wide centre-back. Unfortunately though, with injuries and other problems in the squad, the year after Sheffield United got relegated down to the championship and Chris Wilder ultimately lost his job. The attacking movements by the wide centre-back, they've got to be timed correctly, right? They have to be triggered by a lack of opposing pressure on the ball or used when an obvious opportunity to create a 2v1 arises. Relentless pursuit of an overlap on both sides by both wide centre-backs, well, that's just going to be a disaster, isn't it? You're going to hugely put your team at risk to counter-attacks. Your centre-back's going to be left on his own, basically, and if the two defensive midfielders do come back and cover that midfield is going to be vacated and your opponents are going to be having a field day. So I was thinking about this and roles are actually a relatively new feature in Football Manager, right? And as such, they're continually evolving and trying to keep up with the dynamism of modern football positions. False nine, defensive forward, complete wing back, they've all been introduced fairly recently and have all added an extra dimension and an extra realism to the job of being a football manager in game some of these roles are used more than others right and ultimately as in real life it'll be down to you as an individual manager 
but also down to your player's strengths and weaknesses that will determine what kind of role or position or even formation and tactics that you choose to employ at your club. So will we see a mad rush of 3-5-2s, wing backs, overlapping, attacking centre backs when the game comes out in late October, early November? Listen, I'm not convinced the addition of this new role for me is a welcome one. Anything that can really enhance the simulation and the replication of real world football management and give you all the tools in the toolbox that a real world football manager has is a welcome addition for me. It's absolutely a no brainer, right? But does this mean I'm going to be playing three centre backs when I load up the game on November the 9th? Unfortunately, it doesn't. There's just nothing sexy about having three centre backs, is there, right? It, ultimately, that means you're going to have one less attacker on the pitch, doesn't it? Yeah. So for me, it's a welcome addition. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But give me some new roles further up the pitch, right? Give me some new like Trek Artista or inside forward with like dancing feet or something. I don't know. Thank you very much for watching. Do hit a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new. If you want to hear more from me, I've got my own Football Manager channel that is linked in the video description, FM Wonder Kids or youtube.com slash FM Wonder Kids. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again. Peace.